Your digestive system's function is purely to obtain and process food. Now, depending on what type of food you eat, we classify you differently. So if you're an herbivore, you eat plants. And this would be cows, snails, vegetarians, carnivores eat primarily meat, and this would of course be lions, hawks, spiders, things like that. Omnivores, this typically includes you. So this is eats plants and meat. So even if you are a, a carnivore most of the time, I think most humans are at least in some fashion directly or indirectly eating plants as well. But this puts us into a category with raccoons, crows, all kinds of organisms, right? Depending on how you obtain your food, we can classify you differently too. Suspension feeders, so simply filtering out, these are aquatic organisms, so simply filtering out particles from the water that they need to eat. Substrate feeders, like this worm here, he simply eats along and you see, kind of gross I suppose, he's chewing in this direction, so as he chews, he's processing out that the trail behind him is all feces back here. So food in, feces out. Fluid feeders, so mosquitoes. And then bulk feeders. This is really where we fit and where my pelican or my heron fits here. So ingesting very large particles. I hope you are not ingesting an entire fish, but that heron is about to. So there are differences in digestive tract structure because of your diet and because of how you get the food in. So your digestive tract often correlates with diet. The alimentary canal is what we look at as far as a straight digestive tract. So this is considering for you everything from your esophagus to stomach, to intestines, and that's it. This isn't going to include things like um, your pancreas or liver or any supporting structures. So it's straight line digestive tract, basically. And they found that the longer your digestive tract is, you tend to be more of an herbivore. Why do you think this might be? Well, what are herbivores eating? Plants. What are plants made of? Well, we eat starch, right, from plants, but herbivores are also eating a lot of cellulose. You are not good at breaking down cellulose, but other herbivores are. So what they have seen is that herbivores have a very long digestive tract, in particular this cecum, a specialized portion of their digestive tract, that allows them to more efficiently break down all that cellulose that they're taking in. We have a lot of adaptations to make sure and specializations to make sure that we're able to digest things properly. We just mentioned cellulose digesting for our herbivores and we mentioned the cecum. So this is a very common part of the intestine for things like koalas, like I just showed you, to increase the amount of cellulose that they can break down. Now, in other organisms, the large intestine and the cecum will house the bacteria that they need, so rabbits, and then others actually have a specialized stomach that are going to house all of the bacteria that they need. And these would be things like cows and sheep and deer. And these actually have a special name. They're known as ruminants. 
You may have heard that term before. So we all have specialization to some part of the process, but the basic process is the same for everybody. Ingestion is food into your mouth. Digestion is breaking down the food. And really here the goal is small pieces. Because when we get into absorption, we need to start taking up or absorbing nutrients from the food. And then elimination is removal of any waste that's left over. Anything you were not able to absorb or digest gets passed out of the system. Our goal, of course, is to break down polymers that are in our food into monomers that we can actually, so the idea of breaking down proteins and carbohydrates and so on into something that actually will function for us as far as working in our cellular respiration energy conversion. So quite simply, ingestion, digestion, absorption, and elimination. Depending on the type of organism, sponges actually use vacuoles, those, those plasma membrane surrounded bubbles. in their cells to start to break things down. So those will get broken down by lysosomes. But most animals are actually going to have compartments or stomachs of some sort. We'll use stomachs as a loose term right now. Cnidarians, flatworms, have what we call a gastrovascular cavity. We've mentioned this before with the vascular system. Food enters, enzymes break it down as much as possible. Whatever can be absorbed is and then anything undigested goes back out through the mouth. So this gastro gastrovascular cavity has a one opening. It doesn't have a straight track like you do. So in our hydra here, we see the one opening at the top. Food would move in, get digested as much as possible, and any waste products would go back out the same opening. They are very dependent on surface area of their cells here to digest as much as possible. And the idea is this works fine for simple organisms. But if you're going to have more complex organisms, you're actually going to need that alimentary canal we mentioned. And this involves, like we said, mouth, kind of straight digestive tract. And then, but the idea with the alimentary canal is you actually have two openings. So you've moved from that single opening in the gastrovascular to two openings. And then in between, you'd have specialized regions that you're going to do different types of digestion and absorption. So this one-way flow of food actually becomes very, very important. So we go from your mouth to your pharynx or your throat into your esophagus and then into your stomach, intestines, and then anything left over goes out through the anus. Now, depending on the organism, we are looking for different things to occur in each of these stages and we're looking for specialized compartments or specialized organs associated with it. If you are a bird or if you are an earthworm and some other types of invertebrates, in between your esophagus and your stomach, you're going to actually have two accessory organs. One is a crop and one is a gizzard. These are really important for helping these organisms break down the food. You see them here in my picture in the earthworm, grasshopper, and bird. The crop is actually just a sac, but that sac is actually full of stones. How is this full of stones? Well, if you're an earthworm, all you do is eat dirt. Grasshoppers will will eat dirt out of the 
um, areas as they're trying to catch bugs and so on. And birds will actually sit in parking lots and pick up stones. What's the purpose of this? Well, these stones actually act like a food processor. So it's going to grind up the food or begin grinding up the food before it gets into the stomach. Because for some of these organisms, like here with our grasshopper, it has something known as a gastric pouch. This is not enough. This is not like your stomach. And in our earthworm, it actually has no stomach at all. It goes straight from this crop and gizzard to the small intestine. The gizzard is a very muscular sac that's going to help break down things even more.